Hi, um, Josh Carr here. So sometimes people send in emails about interesting things, and I got this email, and I figured I'd share it with you, and also how I answered it. So just to read it real quick, um, I'm trying to create a model that can provide a go, no go decision for refi. Uh, they have a few properties that are stabilized, and they have debt in the threes. Uh, they're trying to assess whether or not they should refi into a higher rate. Is it worth it? Uh, to refi it at a higher rate. So the way they wrote it to me, and again, I'm just sort of paraphrasing here, was we borrowed at three. Um, I could borrow again at, say, a higher rate. Um, is it as simple as saying, well, if I'm borrowing at three and I could refi it at something much higher, say, nine, as long as I make more than 6% on my money, does it make sense? Um now, of course, in this email I got, there was no conversation about how much money they had borrowed, how much money they planned to borrow. Assumedly, you're refinancing it and looking to pull out more money. Uh, there's the question of term. So let me let me show you what I shared with them as an answer to sort of get them where they needed to go. And a lot of times, frankly, when I get emails from viewers, I often have to rejigger their question to even make sense. Uh, often the issue is that they haven't sort of thought it all the way through, so they need someone to sort of help them. So in this case, let's say we, at some point in the past, borrowed a certain amount of money, say a million bucks, and there's our interest rate, and there's our number of periods, and there's our monthly payment, and that's just a simple PMT function. That's not that interesting. Let me turn off Grammarly, because that's gonna keep getting in the way. Um, fine. And now let's say we've gone 10 years into the loan. If you borrowed a million bucks and you were borrowing it for 25 years and you get 10 years into the loan, that's the balance and that's just a present value calculation. So now let's say you are you you owe 700 grand. And let's say now you're going to refinance that 700. So you've got 700 at 3.5% and you're going to refi it and borrow 1.4 million at a higher rate, say 6%, just to pick a number. The sort of stupid way of looking at this is to be like, well, I borrow more money at six, uh, as long as I make more than six, I win. But when you think about it, when you're refinancing it, yeah, you're put, pulling out 700 grand more at six, but you're also refining your existing three and a half at six. So you have to not just make 6% on the new money, you got to also take into account that on the old money, your interest rate went from three and a half to six. So the way I would look at it would be this. I would say basically, if you borrow 1.4 million, there's the roughly $700,000 that you're now borrowing at six that you have to pay $5,900 on. And there's the old $700,000, that's this 700, there's the old 700 that now you're paying this amount on. So if you think about it, when you borrow the new money, the extra 699, you were paying $5,900 a month on the 699. And since on the old money, you refinanced 700,000 that you were paying $5,000 a month on, and now you're paying $5,900 a month on, if you sort of work it out, you say, well, on the new money, I'm paying $5,900 on the new money, and I'm also taking into account the extra $900 a month I have to pay on the old money. So in other words, now I'm paying $6,800 on $699. And if I take the $699 at $6,800, and crank out a rate, we discover that borrowing 1.4 million at 6% means on the new money you're borrowing, you're paying 8.62%. Which kind of makes sense, because if you think about it, if you've got 1.4 million and half of it is six, and half of it went from three and a half to six, three and a half to six is two and a half percent, so on that new money, you're paying the 6% and the 2.5 extra, and 6 plus 2.5 is 8.5, which is 
a rough approximation, and that's why you're paying 8.62%. So long story short, to the question that the gentleman asked me, um, it's not just enough to make more than 6% on the 6% money. You also have to take into account that on the old money, you're now borrowing that at a higher rate, so you also have to make up for that increment. Um, anyway, that's the way I'd look at this. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are other ways to take it down, but that's the way I'd look at this. Um, and, you know, for what it's worth, this is a very common kind of question uh, that people uh, will ask in real estate finance coursework. Uh, it's it's just a refinancing incremental cost of debt conversation. Um, and this gentleman who asked me this question clearly needed a little bit of help. And so here we are. Cool. Hopefully you find that helpful. I realize this is not like hardcore Excel modeling, but sometimes people like uh, the simple stuff. Simple in air quotes, because I realize that it's not that simple. Uh, if this kind of stuff fills you with joy or you have related questions or conversations you feel like sharing, feel free to email me. I try to get back to everyone, but I can't guarantee it. Uh, but if you ask me a question that's uh, engaging, it will probably get turned into an engaging answer. Cool. Thanks again. Josh Carr, josh at carrealestate.com. Okay. Best of luck.